Welcome to Gear to Live, a weekly TV show aimed at helping people choose life in the midst of the challenges of today. I am Dr. Donovan Thomas and it is my pleasure to be your host. This program is brought to you by Choose Life International and the kindness of MTM TV. Today, we continue our series on suicide prevention. We are grateful for all the guests that have contributed to the well-being of this program. Today, it is a real joy to introduce to you and to invite to the program and to welcome to the program, Pastor Donald Stewart. Pastor Dr. Donald Stewart, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be with you and to be with your viewers as well. It's such a delight to have you, sir. You are such an example to all of us, your humility your spirituality, your sensitivity to people, your care for people is such outstanding. Thanks for the impact that you have made on my life, sir. By the grace of God. We are so delighted more. that you are part of the board of directors when Choose Life International started in 08. Wow, so, yeah, that's a long time ago. And it is 12 yeah. years on October 1 and we'll be actually having a special service of celebration. We invite all our viewers to join us on Zoom for this outstanding mm. event. And I, I wish I were here as well. You will get a chance, sir. Yes. September okay. 10th was World Suicide Prevention Day. We had an outstanding conference, and we'll be talking to you a little bit about that. Your presentation yeah. was so great. But before we talk to you about the conference and your presentation, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I'm uh, born in Westmoreland, Jamaica long time ago 63 years ago and i grew up went to manning's high school excelsior and some other places and uh, well eventually became a teacher at arden high school for nine years madison physics i then i retired from teaching went into full-time ministry as a pastor and i've since retired as a pastor after 29 years okay so you have retired twice yeah retired but not tired yes. this is the man that we meet today pastor author teacher missionary you may recall that when we did our series on gear to live 12 keys to happiness we made mention of pastor dr donald stewart as he contributed the chapter open your life to spiritual intervention mm, yes. pastor donald what are you doing currently well, presently we are in Zambia, my wife and myself, Andrea, we are in Zambia, been there for, let's say, four and a half years as missionaries with Operation Mobilization. OM, yes. that's the same ministry that uh, owns and operates the ship, the book ship. Yes, that Logos everybody Hope. knows, Logos Hope. Yes. Great, great ministry. Yes. And uh, uh, what is your work like down there? What are you doing? Well, it has been a variety of things we I was serving as a teacher in the missions training school in Kabwe in that's in the center of Zambia and uh, then we went up by the lake Lake Tanganyika that's the second largest uh, deepest lake in the world and we were there in the villages up there interacting working along with Muslims working along with refugees and a whole lot of other things so yeah. what would you say has been your greatest joy in serving in Zambia there is no one thing it's just just being there with the people and seeing the variety working with seeing which doctors come to know jesus christ seeing uh, building friendships with muslims and helping them to to know jesus and seeing some of them come being converted to christ and yeah just so many things having been with you on the mission field in africa mm. and other places i know that's a real joy yeah. to see people come yeah. to faith in christ because at the, let's face it at the end of the day it's it's not this life on this earth that really matters is what happens after this life is only a preparation for the real life that is to come eternity 
we want to wish you all the best as you continue to serve such strategic role in the kingdom of God. Thank you. Pastor, I mentioned that you're author. Um, can you count the number of books you have written? Well, there are 23 that's published. I have four that's waiting to be published. And, and several that are unwritten. Yeah, some that we're working on and so on. <laughs> you, you have inspired me because you have given your life to just getting things done as you believe God has ordered. And it is such a delight to just read some of your work you're just pouring into into people. but just remember life is short you know on this earth and so we have to make use of what we have why we have it and uh, because we never know when we leave this earth and enter into eternity and it is so sad when people choose to end their own lives mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is so sad that an eight-year-old according to the media would actually end up taking their own wow. life. It is so sad to hear of a 12 year old because mm. of the challenges of the Corona crisis wow. taking his own life. It is so sad to hear about a, a medical doctor who frustrated and powerless decided that she couldn't take it any longer, took her own life. Wow. And there are just so many things going on in the midst of this Corona crisis. Wow. Wow. And Choose Life International exists to help people live physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Our passion is to see men and women Hallelujah. choose life Amen. physically, Amen. emotionally, but there's no greater joy than seeing them come to faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. We think of the story with uh, when the jailer was about to kill himself. Yes, that's Paul, Acts, Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, mm -hmm. Paul said, do yourself no harm. Yes, right. We are all here. And thank you for being there for so many who are suicidal, who are hurting, and just people who need help. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So what, let's talk a little bit about the World Suicide Prevention Day conference yeah. that took place last Thursday. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I thought it had a great impact on people. Um, I'm not sure the exact number of persons who were actually in the Zoom could have been about 800 somewhere there. I think we had a little over 800 yeah. in Zoom and another 150 on YouTube. Wow. And But what I can say is that a variety of areas were covered and uh, it was, I think, very helpful to hear the different ways in which people can be helped but also the ways in which people need to guard against falling into the trap of suicidal tendencies right up to recently i was talking to one of your fellow presenters who really reflected on the topic you shared on spirituality and suicidality the forgotten dimension yes let's talk a little bit about that topic spirituality and suicidality the forgotten okay. dimension well the, the thing is that you know we as natural human beings and uh, as those who are educated you know we go to school we learn things we tend to operate just with the brain and to say to think through things and so after a while we think that scientific things and reasoning things out and and the input from sociology and psychology and so on are the only areas to look at and okay. What what we're trying to say is, hey, don't forget about the spiritual dimension, because after all is said and done, that's where the real action takes place. And you know, in Choose Life International, we seek to have a balanced perspective. Mm -hmm. So we believe in the bio, psycho, social, spiritual that's model right. of intervention. There's a place of medication, yes. and we salute those who have done the hard work and the studies to that's be right. able to help people with medication. Also, those who are in psychotherapy, that's the right. counseling intervention. We believe that there's a place of social intervention, yes. and there's also a place of spiritual intervention. Yeah. So it's not one or the other yes it is that we must be open to all possibilities and sometimes a combination of these things yeah i think that's what we need to see so the spiritual is the invisible mm -hmm. part of it you there may be all kinds of manifestations and sometimes the same thing that presents uh, itself can be diagnosed as um, a psychiatric problem yeah. as well as a spiritual problem. Yes. And how do we make those kinds of distinctions? Well, let me just say this, um, uh, Dr. Donovan. The, my, my thoughts or what the Lord put in me was that there are two aspects to it. Okay. One is to the spirituality as thing. One is that the need for watching out for your life overall so that 
you don't fall into the trap of having what we I call low spiritual immunity. Ah. Because you see, just like how we talk about the coronavirus and we say, oh, we, we make sure that we eat properly, rest properly, have our value, whatever, and then we protect ourselves with a mask and with everything else. What can happen is that we can have low spiritual immunity. immunity. And so you're not born again. Okay. You, you don't have enough Bible inside of you. Right. You don't have enough of the Holy Spirit working in you. Right. You're not walking in holiness. You're not praying and so on. So that now creates an opening. And then where there are real demonic spirits, which is a second aspect to it now, these demonic spirits working in a context where there's low spiritual immunity will do much damage. And so when that happens, sometimes it's difficult to see that it's a demonic activity involved. It might take the appearance, as you rightly say, of something that's psychotic or something neurotic or something that you know that you treat with counseling and therapy and medication and so on. And this is where now discerning of spirit has to come into play. And right. this is why we need to have knowledge and understanding and insight from all the different fields and disciplines so that we will bring in the relevant a treatment, treatment in condition, yes, as is required, you know, yeah. in situation. So, give me an example of uh, the manifestation of the spiritual over the um, the psychiatric, for instance. Well, uh, as it relates to suicide prevention. All right, let, let me give you one classic example of something. We had a situation some years ago with a student <laughs> at uh, the. Uh, the University of West Sydney, a first year student. Yeah. And she had been uh, affected by many different things happening, which uh, affected her mind and emotions and so on. But at the long, uh, the, the real issue was that she became vulnerable to spiritual forces. And so demons actually entered her, and she was now ready to jump over the second floor at Mary Sequel Hall on one afternoon, on Wednesday. And she cried out for help because she realized that there was something in her and it was just her mind or her emotions. And it was the following day we met with her, had an extended time of prayer, and the demons surfaced. Okay. You know, and uh, started carrying on and uh, acting up. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the two of us who were helping her were able to speak with authority, command the demons out, and all of her suicide tendencies disappeared immediately. And the demons literally left her and she was set free. It's pretty much like what you see in Acts chapter in, in Acts chapter eight, where demons are leaving out of people screaming and they were set free. Yeah. Pastor Donald, you know in our own practice my wife is the psychologist mm -hmm. uh, i come to this as a minister of the gospel okay. my background is not psychology or psychiatry but we work together mm -hmm. in, in 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 cases so my wife's office is just uh beside mine so one day i heard this wrestling in my wife's office mm -hmm. and i did the unusual thing of breaking her opening her door and going and say the rest she was her. struggling with this big lady mm -hmm. the lady was twice her size and she was holding on to the lady and i don't know i didn't know what was happening but i said in the name of jesus i, I command know. you to take your dirty hands off god's property and i heard some something dropped on the ground and when i looked it was the bottle that the lady had in her hand that she was the broken bottle that she was trying to get to her neck with so my wife was holding on to her uh, and as we took authority in the name of jesus she just wilted and and dropped so this thing about spirituality and suicidality is real and there are other examples that you have oh yes uh, there are many more i mean I, one of the things i shared on at the conference i didn't get the time to go into it in depth yes. but it's what happened that when we had the benny hinn meetings Yes. back in 1999 uh, at Hero Circle. Right. And while the meetings were going on, a lady came along, walking along the, the Hero Circle. She said something, as she heard the music and the preaching, something just led her to come over to the... Right. There. And she came to the tent, the deliverance tent, special ministry's tent, yes. where I was working and where we had people there. And she, she, she gave us the knife that she had, a long knife. 
Yes. She had it tucked away inside. She was on her way to kill herself. Right. Okay. And uh, as she came in, we were able to take the knife from her, pray with her. The demons left instantly. And the woman was set free, led her to the Lord Jesus Christ. And she left there with, in peace and joy. So this is just a nice But we see these kinds of things very often. It's just that nobody really writes about them or speaks about them too often. The forgotten dimension. It's a forgotten dimension. And spirituality is important as we seek to just go through life. Mm -hmm. So how can in invisible natural entities affect the lives of human beings? Well, the, the fact is it happens every day. Uh, COVID, take COVID-19. Yes. Well, anybody has seen any uh, COVID-19 viruses? When last have you seen any? Uh, I haven't seen any yet. Too. I don't know if anybody has seen it, but we are going around, we're doing this. Yes, yes, yes. I'm we're, we're watching, you know, we're making sure social distance. And we're doing all of that from because of something we're not seeing. It's right. invisible. Yes. If these are natural viruses. They are invisible. Now, in the same way, you have spiritual viruses. Yes. In quotation marks. Right. And that's what we're talking about, demonic spirits. Now. Yes. They're invisible. So the same way that the natural virus can affect us in a natural way, the spiritual viruses, the demonic spirits, can also affect us. And this is why we have to have high levels of spiritual immunity. Uh -huh. And this is why we must be born again. This is why we must learn to follow Jesus Christ. Because true life comes through a knowledge, a personal knowledge and relationship with Jesus Christ. And if we can't catch that, then our life is going to be just keep going in circles. Right. You know, sometimes people have fears as to whether or not if they cast the demon out from somebody, if it can go into somebody else. So how do you respond to that? Oh, it can. Uh, and uh, Jesus never told us that uh, that should prevent us from casting out demons. I mean, the fact is that if I am vulnerable, right, then it can come into me. Yes. Even the one who is casting it out, the, the demons can turn on them. Um, Acts chapter 19, verse 13 to 16, the seven sons of Sceva. Yes. They had to run for their life bleeding and naked. Okay? Yeah. So it can happen. But what we have to do is to make sure that we ourselves are walking in the way that God wants us to, living how God wants us to, being born again, not just churchianity, not just religiosity, but being born again in the name of Jesus Christ and make sure we live holy lives. And that way, we don't have to be afraid of anything. We are the ones who will have authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm us. So one of the things that actually hinders this high immunity is the pretense, the hypocrisy, mm -hmm. the having a form of godliness uh, and denying the power, the power thereof. We, right. we live as if, as if uh, we are really um, holy before the Lord when there are all kinds of holes in our spiritual mm. lives. You're talking now about Ephesians 4.27. Yes. Paul says, do not give the devil a foothold yeah. or do not give place for the devil. And he's talking to Christians. Yes. So that is a problem for many of us. So there is the dimension of the spiritual as we deal with suicide prevention. Well, and service. we don't want to be ignorant at all. That's right. And there are some things that medication cannot help. And the people of God need to rise up and mm -hmm. take authority in the name of Jesus. And we want to ask you to be praying, even as we work with people who are suicidal. Yes, Pastor sir. Donald, when I was ministering to this thirteen years, this thirteen-year-old child, he, I was doing through going through my regular interview with him, mm -hmm. and I noticed in the middle of the interview, his head was going around a circle, mm -hmm. his hands started doing something like that, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, I could only see the white of his eyes. Wow, wow, wow. I realized I wasn't dealing with a psychological situation. Mm -hmm. I called in one of my staff members and said, let's pray over this child. Before we prayed, I said to the child, say after me, John, not his real name, John belongs to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the outright response was, John belongs to Satan. Not wow. once, not twice, not three times. Mm -hmm. We took authority in the name Hallelujah. of Jesus yeah, and he was right. set free. That's right. Now, some people think you're making up stories there now. But when it reaches them, 
in their own home, their own family, their own school, their own church, they will realize this is a reality we're dealing with. And if you're not prepared to face the reality, you will be shocked out of your pants, if you're wearing pants, that is. Yes. Okay? And you, we just need to make sure that our lives are where they ought to be. In God. In God. And it is not by might. It is not that we can say... We have done it. We have mm. to really place it correctly. It is only through the power of the Holy That's Spirit. Right. That's right. So as we serve, our dependence is on God and God alone. Alone, alone, alone. Fear I, I just, just, show. it's not an ritual. It is because not a ritual. again, people are doing this, sprinkling this, and yeah. they go out there, they go out here, and they go out it's here. It's no rituals. It's no wearing of any red cloth. It's no wearing of any special thing around your neck. It is the power of the Lord God Almighty through the shed blood of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus and with the authority of having a right relationship with Jesus Christ. Right relationship with Jesus Christ. Some of us want the benefit, mm -hmm. but we're not willing to make the commitment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We want the fruit, but our roots are shallow. Yeah, yeah. I want to say dig deep, my friend. That's right. Dig deep in Christ. There are better days coming and you may be the answer. You may be the vehicle to the answer that God wants to give to some people that you know who are hurting. Yes, Pastor sir. Donald, I remembered uh, that we met together with a lady some time ago, you and I. And uh, this lady was suffering from uh, depression. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spent probably two hours with her and we prayed with her. We Provide, we did what we believe God would have had us okay, to do. Yes. And uh, when I asked her sister, how is she doing now, our sister? She said, I don't know what you guys did with her, but all I know is that she's doing much better. Hallelujah. Pastor Donald, tell me, does Jesus Christ heal mental illness? Well, if you go back to Mark chapter 5, and you read one verse 1 to 20, you will have to ask the question, was that man called Legion? Would he have been described as having a mental illness? A man who is running up around the place and who is cutting, cutting up himself. himself. Nobody can touch him. Nobody can. You're talking about the height of mental illness. And yet, when Jesus commanded the demons to come out of him, that man was instantly set free. When the people came to see this man, they said three things. One, he was now sitting at Jesus' feet. He was in his right mind and he was clothed. He was now able to keep on clothing. So, of course, Jesus does it. And the same power that Jesus had in terms of healing, setting people free, is the same power he transmitted to his disciples. And he says, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. And he has now said, the Holy Spirit is there to, to do the work. And so he does it. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit, but it's Jesus who is doing the operating behind the scenes. And so it's for us to make ourselves available to be used by Jesus Christ. You know, be. <clears throat> there are some persons who are watching right now who are saying, I want to be available. And as in a little while before we close, I'm going to ask you, Pastor Donald, to pray a prayer of commitment, a prayer of healing and intervention in the lives of people. I will. There are stories and stories of frustration and brokenness and, and people trying this and trying that. But until we get to the root. Yeah. So, Pastor Donald, these things about suicide, uh, suicidal spirits, do they, the, these things affect families? Is it, can it be generational? You, you, the thing is, that anything that happens in the natural can, is a pointer to what can happen in the spiritual. And just like, oh, you have generational problems with cancer, diabetes, and so on. It's the same way that there can be spirits operating in family lines that cause these things to happen. And if you trace it, you might find out that there are some doorways which create, were created by the grandfather or the grandmother. Some were in the lodges and some were into other things that they did, strange witchcraft and so on, which opened the doors to these things. And it has now haunted the rest of their family line coming down, down, down. 
But unless you can see with spiritual eyes and you are willing to confront the roots of those things, then it will continue. Doorways, roots, manifestations, whatever it is, God is able he to break is. the yoke. You may be ready for God's supernatural intervention. Guess what? God is ready for your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Donald, thank you so much for your significant contribution to Gear to Live. Okay. Thanks for the contribution that you continue to make on the lives of many people. May God continue to bless you and bless your family. I want to ask you now to use the next 90 seconds, the prayer prayer over the lives of people. I think you have, you have two minutes. Okay. Let's pray. Father, we are indeed thankful for this opportunity. We thank you for every single man, woman, boy, girl who is listening and who is watching right now. And we pray, God Almighty, that your words will reach into their hearts that those who are not born again, that you will disturb them, shake them up, help them to see that it is good to have knowledge and information and all of that, but unless you are born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so we pray, God Almighty, that you will speak into their lives and that they will repent and be born again. We pray for those, oh God, who are troubled, who are disturbed, and who are wondering, what can I do with my life? And, and some of them are feeling, oh God, as though they want to end their own life. But I pray, God Almighty, that you will cause them to, to know that there is hope in Jesus Christ, that there is peace and joy through Jesus Christ. And we pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will reach into their situation right now and give them that hope. We pray for those also, Lord, who need to be at a place where they can help others. We pray that those who are fearful and intimidated by the demonic powers, that they will recognize that in Christ Jesus we are more than conquerors. And that they will understand, oh God, that Jesus has already given us the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. May you prove that to them as they continue to be open to you, O oh God, to receive what it is you are giving to them for the sake of the gospel and the sake of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You've been watching Gear to Live, a weekly TV show brought to you by Choose Life International through the kindness of MTM TV. Join us every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. with rebroadcasts on Saturdays at 6 p.m. Check out our website, ChooseLifeIntl.org for free resources. We've been doing these great webinars and you can access them on our website. Join us every Sunday at 5 p.m. and every Monday at 6 p.m. for our free Zoom webinars. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Choose Life International. See you next week. Same place, same time. And remember, there is indeed a spiritual dimension to suicide. Take the step and receive the healing you need right now.